Hello everyone, this is Dr. E, and for today we're going to be learning how to name angles in geometry. In mathematics, symbols and notations are important, and that's what we're going to be working on in our lesson in geometry about angles. So by definition, angle consists of two different rays with a common endpoint. And you are looking at an example of an angle in geometry, and these two rays that you are seeing has a common intersection or a common point that we call vertex in geometry. So we have sides and we have vertex in an angle and these are the parts of an angle that we need to remember when we're working with an angle. So again, the two sides are the rays of our angle in this example and the common point which is point A is what we call as the vertex in geometry. So how do we properly name an angle just like points, planes, and lines, we have ways on how to name an angle properly. And one of them would be angle A. And we are using the vertex to represent an angle, but sometimes we have multiple angles with the same vertices. That's why we use a different part of uh, our angle to name the angle. And we can use Angle 1, which is what you are seeing inside the opening of our angle, we can also use that as a notation for an angle. And another way of uh, naming an angle is using the points in this angle, and we have point CAB, and we can name it as angle CAB for this matter, and we can also interchange the sides of our angle, but not the vertex, and we can call this as angle BAC. So notice that on those two notations, or last two notations, the letter A, or our vertex, did not move because if you write your angle as angle ABC, this is not the same as the angle CAB that we are seeing in our example. So make sure that the vertex and make sure that your marker is working. <laughs> make sure that your vertex is always in the middle of your three-letter angle notation so that you will not get confused with the angle that you are working with. And again, in mathematics, notations are important, just like the symbols that we use in the order of operations because with slight changes and differences, it would mean differently. So let's define another part of our angle. And first, we need to know what interior of an angle looks like. And in this case, the interior is inside our angle, represented by this region right here. This is what we call as the interior, which is an angle containing all the points between the two sides of an angle. And if we have an interior angle, we also have an exterior of an angle, which contains all the points that are not in the interior of the angle, which is represented by this region in our angle. So notice that um, parts, notations are important in geometry. So make sure that when we are using words like exterior of an angle, interior of an angle, we are understanding what we're talking about or describing in geometry. Now, what about identifying or naming an angle. So now that we know how to write the proper names of our angle, we'll be able to identify these names using this figure. And now we are seeing multiple angles. And to be able to spot them, we'll first identify the first one that we could see. And here we are seeing angle one. We can use angle one, or you can also use angle P. But in this case, I will use angle one because we are seeing multiple angles with the same vertex, which is vertex P. Another angle that we are seeing here is angle two. So angle two is another angle that is formed in this diagram. And if you're seeing another angle, then you are right because I'm also seeing angle 
MPQ in this particular form, which we can also name as angle QPM in this manner. And this is how we're going to name each angles from now on. So if we have angle one, which is represented by uh, this angle that we are seeing in our diagram, there is another way on how we can name angle one. And we can name this angle using MPN and we can name it as angle MPN. And another way of naming Angle 1 is using the other side of the angle, starting with N, so we'll have angle NPM. So these are the number of ways on how to name angles in geometry, which is a very important skill that we need to learn to be able to understand the language of math better. And speaking of the language of math, we also have devices or tools that we use to measure angle. So the instrument that we use to measure angle is called a protractor and the unit of measurement that we use in angles formed using this diagram is what we call as degrees. So this is an example of an angle being measured by a protractor and in this measurement we need to find the measurement of angle A so in this angle, we are seeing two numbers, 30 and 150 degrees. And we know that visually, this angle is not an obtuse angle. This is over 90 degrees. So that means we're using this number right here to correctly measure our angle, which is 30 degrees. So this is angle A, which is 30 degrees. So if we have another angle, so let's name this angle as A sub 2. And this measurement, we are seeing two measurements again, 180. And in this particular case, we know that this is an obtuse angle. So definitely over 90 degrees. So this angle is angle 100 degrees. And for the third angle right here, we are seeing an acute angle. So we know that measurement of angle A sub 3 is going to be 70 degrees. And this is how we use a protractor to measure our angle, just like what we did in this example. So if we have these angles, we can easily name it using a protractor, starting with this angle, angle MQR or angle RQM. In this case, it's in between 50 and 40. So that means our angle measurement is 45 degrees, just like what we are seeing in our protractor. So angle RQM or MQR is 45 degrees. And the next angle that we are seeing is this angle represented by the blue angle right here. And we know that it's forming an L-shaped angle and its side, or side S of this angle is at 90 or pointing at 90 degrees. So we know that this is a 90 degree angle, also known as a right angle. So angle SQR or RQS is equal to 90 degrees or a right angle. And the next one, the last one that we're seeing, this angle right here that lies in between 70 or 170 and 160. So we know that this is a 165 degree angle. And this angle is obviously an obtuse angle. And we can name it as NQR or RQN, depending on how you're going to use your vertex. So again, Notations are important, and speaking of notations, we have another one that we're going to be using, and that is the congruency of the two angles. And congruent, by definition, it means they have the same measurement. So two angles that have the same measures are called congruent angles, and the symbols that we are using for congruency is that little symbol that you're seeing, which we can write here so that everyone can see it clearly. So this is the symbol for congruent, if I can spell it right, congruent measurement of our angles. So we are seeing two angles right here, angle A and angle B. So angle A is 30 degrees and angle B is also 30 degrees. And since they have the same measurement, we know that 
angle A is congruent to angle B using this diagram. And another way of representing congruency using a mark or symbol is using this arc right here. This arc is also another way on how to point out that we are looking at congruent angles in this particular diagram. So congruency, we have its symbol using that little equal sign with a little curl at the top, or we can also use the number of arcs to be able to denote that those angles are congruent to each other. So this is how we use this angle, and uh, to be able to understand uh, mathematics better, we need to be able to know these marks so that we'll be able to see how to interpret measurements and uh, names and parts of certain figures in geometry correctly. And speaking of notations, our number bender challenge of the day is for you to find the angle measurement of this green angle right here, angle MAP or PAM. This is a little bit different from the examples that I have shared with you, but I'm pretty sure that all of you will be able to solve this correctly. So comment down below and let's see if you can find the measurement of angle MAP. And this is our lesson on angles and geometry. Remember, learning mathematics is like learning a foreign language. Knowing the symbols and phrases and words associated with problems involving angles, specifically in geometry, will help you understand math better. This is Dr. E, and see you again next time. Bye!